What's up guys and welcome to Myth Busting Monday, Season 2, Episode 63. Yes dudes, this is the show where we bust the myths that you guys leave in the comment section below. So if you guys have got any myths you would like to see featured in next week's episode, all you've got to do is leave those inside the comment section right now or at the end of the video and we'll see which ones get featured next week. Now this week is a very special week of Myth Busting Mondays because this is Season 2, Episode 63 and on Season 1 we did 137 episodes. So this is technically the 200th episode of Myth Busting Mondays. Last week, you guys absolutely smashed that like button and got over 7,000 likes, which is just ridiculous. So to celebrate the 200th episode of Myth Busting Mondays, let's see if we can go for the most insane like goal we could possibly even get right now, which is maybe 10,115 likes. Let's just see if it's even possible for this special episode of Myth Busting Mondays. So smash that like button right now, click the subscribe button if you are brand new to become the latest member of the pizza club and without further ado sit back relax and enjoy season 2 episode 63 of mid busting mondays so the first myth of today's show is being sent in by Ram Jam Radio. And Ram Jam Radio says, Myth, on Ascension, does temporal gift work on the 92nd Easter egg death machine? And five pizza emojis. Now this is a great myth. If you guys don't know, at the end of the Ascension Easter egg, you get a 90 second death machine. And that's all you got on the Black Ops 1 version. But then with the Black Ops 3 version, Treyarch also decided to give you a Perkaholic, which made it a little bit more fun and a little bit more of a reward to actually go out and do this Easter egg. Now we have tried this before over on the moon easter egg where you open up the pyramid to reveal samantha and when you get that 90 second dev machine on moon i do believe that you get a three minute dev machine if you have temporal gift if i am wrong let me know inside the comment section but we're going to be making our way over to ascension right now with that temporal gift gobble gum which is the gobble gum that doubles the amount of time drops are inside the map for and let's see if the easter egg reward for ascension and temporal gift will be a three minute dev machine here we go let's go and check this out okay guys so here we are are on ascension and we are on the final step of the easter egg right now and as you guys can see i've got temporal gift inside of my invent right now and like i said final step so our orb is inside of the map right there so all we've got to do right now is throw a gersh device onto that orb and then fire it with our ray gun and also our thunder gun then the orb is going to go up into the sky and it's going to reward us with a 90 second death machine or is it because we do have that temporal gift is it going to be a three minute death machine so what we're going to do right here i'm going to get that dead machine out in just a second and then I'll jump back to this game in just a few minutes time when we actually find out how long it's going to be on for. So there we go. We got our dead machine now and I'll be back in just a couple of seconds. Okay guys, so we are back right now and you guys can see that the death machine is now going away. The icon is flashing, which means that we're about to lose it. And guess what? It's only been 90 seconds. So the temporal gift does not double the amount of time that you get the death machine for at the end of the ascension easter egg. Even though if you got a death machine anyway, just as a normal drop, that death machine would double the amount of time with temporal gift which is crazy right it doesn't do the easter egg one but it does a normal one but there you go that is what happens when you pick up the dead machine at the end of the ascension easter egg with temporal gift it does not double the amount of time that you get that dead machine for but that myth was absolutely awesome so thank you very much to ram jam rehab for sending that one in dude you absolute legend and let's go and make our way over to the next myth of today's show right now which has been sent in by matt andrews and matt andrews says hey cmp i love the ending music well, thank you, my friend. He also says, for a continuation of the Bowie Knife Iceberg step, try using the Ethereal Razor modifier. Now, this is a myth that I took off one of the older episodes of Mid Busting Mondays, where we used the Bowie Knife on the icebergs. And we found out that that Bowie Knife actually managed to break that iceberg in 20 melees. So if you've not got any good weapons, it's honestly not that bad to get through that iceberg step pretty darn quickly. But what Matt Andrews is saying right here is if we had the Ethereal Razor modifier slot on, which makes your melee attack super powerful, will that then go to towards that iceberg step as well with the Bowie knife, meaning that it'll take less melees on that iceberg to actually break. Once again, I have no idea. That's why we're doing this. I don't know why I always say I have no idea, but let's go and do it anyway. Here we go. Let's go make our way over to Voyage of Despair. Okay, guys, so here we are on Voyage of Despair right now, and we are making our way straight onto that iceberg step right now as well. You guys can see inside of our Odin slot, we have our Ethereal Razor perk, and we've got our Bowie knife. And as you guys just saw, I put Sword Flay on to make a little bit of an extra difference right there. And look at that. That is ridiculous. Was that six melees there? 
only six melees to break that iceberg. So if you guys are having troubles with this step, let me just double check this one more time right here. Is it going to be six melees? Because that is actually ridiculous. Yeah, dude, I think it was. I think that's six melees. Okay, but like I said, if you guys are struggling with this iceberg step on Voyage of Despair, this is a great alternative for you guys. Have Ethereal raise it inside of your Odin slot or the modifier slot, whatever you want to call it. Make sure you've got that Bowie knife and make sure you put Sword Flay on as well to increase that damage of that melee attack even more. Now, six melees of the Bowie knife is definitely going to be a lot quicker than six bullets of the Kraken. So there you go. If you are speedrunning this and you want to get it slightly quicker, there's your alternative right there. Sword Flay, Ethereal raise it, and of course, that Bowie knife. But there you go. That was absolutely awesome. Thank you very much to Matt Andrews for sending that one in, dude. You absolute living legend, my friend. And let's go and make our way over to the next myth of today's show right now, which has been sent in by Is Master Gaming. And Is Master Gaming says, Myth on Origins. Can the G-Strike or Melee break the tombstone after being frozen by the Ice Staff? And loads of pizza emojis. Now, we've tried a decent amount of things with this tombstone up to now. We've tried the Fire Staff, a regular melee and quite a few other things as well but my boy is master game and he's saying can we break it with the g-strike or can we break it with the upgraded melee attack honestly this has to be the last one for the tombstone step i can't see anything else breaking it but without further ado let's jump over to the map origins right now and let's go and check this out okay guys so here we are on the map origins we're up to the step of the easter egg where we can freeze the tombstones inside of the map for the ice staff upgrade so let's go ahead and do that right now so there's our tombstone it is now frozen let's bring out our g strike grenade throw it in front of that bad boy and let's see when those missiles come down from the robots is it going to damage that tombstone here we go let's check this out it should be coming down there you go and is it broken i can't see it but maybe that's just because it does now there you go it's still there so no 100 not the g strike grenade does not break the tombstone and i didn't realize they were about to get stepped on right there as well so we were instantly downed but that's absolutely fine so the next thing you wanted to find out is the upgraded melee attack right so here we go let's check this one out no, look at that. So now let's just make our way over by no clipping onto that little boundary right there. And let's melee it up close. No, look at that. So once again, the upgraded melee attack on Origins and of course those G-Strike grenades do not break the tombstone. And like I said, that has to be the final one for this tombstone step. There can't be anything else. I'm pretty certain we realize at this point that it is just bullets that is going to break that tombstone step, right? But regardless, thank you very, very much for it, Master Gaming, for sending that one in, dude. You living legend. And let's go and make our way over to the next myth of today's show right now which has been sent in by green dog 456 and green dog 456 says myth on descent when you pick up the security drop and activate the traps and the doors are closing can you get crushed by the closing doors now this is a great question if you guys didn't know over on exo zombies there is a drop that sets off all the traps over the map honestly it would be a pretty cool thing to have on treyarch zombies but it's only available on aw zombies and one of those traps is just slamming doors shut now i vaguely remember going down via this method at some point, but I also kind of think that it can't. Maybe that was a dream. I don't know. So let's go and try it anyway. Let's go and jump over to Descent on AW Zombies right now, and let's go and check this out. Okay, guys, so here we are on Exo Zombies on Advanced Warfare right now. We've just picked up one of the trap drops right now as well, and now we can go and check if we go and stand in one of the doorways on the map. Is it going to crush us right here? So here we go. Let's check this out. Oh, no, dude, it actually just shut. It shut on me right there. I don't know if you guys actually managed to see that, but I heard it, and it fully shuts on on me and no it didn't and then of course it shut again after that but when it was on me right there and i was in the doorway it did close on me so no maybe i was dreaming at that point so no the doors can't down you when you have the security drop on on aw zombies wow i honestly thought that it was actually going to work but no it didn't okay well there you go green dog 456 thank you for sending that one in my dude you absolute legend and now we're gonna make our way over to the next myth so many myths today of today's episode which has been sent in by logan sparrow and logan sparrow says Myth on Blood of the Dead's Gauntlet. If you use the burnt out elixir on the swordfish weapon round, can you complete the round with just the burnt out elixir? And loads of pizza and emojis. Now, this is a cool myth. If you guys have got any myths for those gauntlets, feel free to send those in because they have all kind of weird and wacky rounds that you have to do that we could totally mess with with certain elixirs or talismans. But what Logan is referring to right here is there's a round on the Blood of the Dead Gauntlet where you're only allowed to use one weapon, a very specific weapon. It has to be the swordfish. But Logan is asking can you kill those zombies with the burned out elixir which is the elixir that when zombies hit you they instantly blow up into a ball of flames so can we use that or is it gonna fail the round i don't know let's jump over to the blood of the dead gauntlet right now and let's go and check this out okay guys so here we are on the blood of the dead gauntlet and we are currently going on to round five
five, which is use the swordfish only round. And as you guys can see inside of my invent right now, I do have that burnt out elixir activated on the left hand side of my D-pad in my gobble gum slot. So without further ado, let's walk up to a zombie right here and let's see when that zombie finally does hit us, is the zombie going to burst into flames or is it going to completely end the round? Here we go. Let's check this out. Whoa, dude, look at that. So yes, it did kill the zombies and no, the round did not fail. Meaning that technically, yes, you can use a burnt out elixir on this round without having the swordfish. And I think if I would have trained up the zombies correctly so they were in a massive pile, I honestly think we could have ended the round with that, especially with it only being on round five. There's probably only going to be around 15 to 20 zombies on this round. So the burnt out elixir could have definitely got rid of all of those for us. So there you go. Yes, you can use the burnt out elixir on the round five swordfish only round on the blood of the dead gauntlet. That is very, very cool right there. Logan, massive shout out to you for sending that one in, my dude. You living legend. And let's go make our way over to the next myth of today's show right now, which is coming in from Devastator 66. And Devastator says, myth, untag the totem. If you use head drama while doing the snowball headshot challenge, will the snowball kills count towards the challenge? And no pizza emojis. This makes me upset. If you guys leave a myth, smash those pizza emojis inside of the comment section. Now, I went to go and record this myth, and then I realized that there's actually no snowball headshots only challenge on Tag to Totem. But I thought, you know what? Let's jump over to Tag to Totem. Let's do this exact myth, but forget about the challenges. And let's just see if the snowballs can cause zombies to have headshots or not. So without further ado, let's get on to Tag to Totem and let's check this out. Okay, guys, so here we are on Tag to Totem. We've got a load of zombies inside of here right now as well. So without further ado, let's activate our head drama elixir right here. We've already got our snowballs in our invent. And let's see if those snowballs can, in fact, cause headshots on the zombies with head drama activated. Here we go. Let's check this out. No, look at that. That was definitely not a headshot. Two and the third shot right there. And the zombie still has a head. So definitely not. No, snowballs cannot do headshots on this map. Even with that head drama elixir activated. Now, coming to think about it, I kind of understand what the myth he was talking about right there inside of the comment section before. But he kind of worded it in the wrong way. I think he just wanted to know on the headshot challenge, can you use snowballs? But we found out both right here. No, you definitely can't because you can't get headshots with the snowballs unless you actually aim at the head. But head drama doesn't do that if you aim at any other part of the body. So there you go. The answer is no. Head drama does not allow you to get a headshot with the snowballs on the map tag the totem. But regardless of the outcome right there, thank you so much to Devastator66 for sending that myth in, dude. You absolute legend. And let's go and make our way over to the final myth. The ultimate myth of today's show right now, which has been sent in by Dunk in Love. And Dunk in Love says, myth, what happens if you mod everyone the time bomb on Buried? And you activate all of them at the same time. Now, this is a great question and I can almost guarantee that we've never seen this before ever because you can only get one person with the time bomb on the map buried at any one time. But of course, we know that I've got a mod menu, right? We know that I can jump onto a game with my buddies and I can give everyone the time bomb. So that is exactly what we are going to do right now. Let's go and see what happens when you activate four time bombs on the map buried all at the same time. Here we go. Let's check this out. Okay, guys, so here we are on the map buried and unfortunately, as the time of recording this right now, it's very early in the morning and there's nobody available online except from two of my friends. So we've got two of us inside of this game as well as myself. So three of us are going to check this out right here. And at the minute, as you guys see, we have all got the time bombs. We've managed to mod the game. So every single one of us inside of this game has got that time bomb available. So without further ado, let's check out what happens when we all drop our time bombs at the same time and activate those time bombs. Oh, did you see that? So basically I threw it down and then it got overwritten by the next guy. And then the next guys got overwritten by that one. So it looks like there can only ever be one actual time bomb down on the map at any one time. But one thing I am interested in right now is that the fact that we all have these stopwatches, right? So can any of us control anyone else's time bomb? I'm going to set this up again right here and let's check this out. Okay, guys, so here we are. As you guys can see, I've not thrown this time bomb down. This is not mine. I still have my time bomb inside of my invent, right? But I'm going to try and activate the clock to see if I can actually use this one. Here we go. Let's check this one out. Yes, look at that. That is ridiculous. So yes, any player with the time bomb clock can activate some Someone else's time bomb. So you saw right there that my buddy threw that time bomb down and then I was able to use his time bomb myself. And this is probably why Treyarch made it so only one player could have this inside of the game. Could you understand the amount of trolling that would happen inside of Buried if everyone could get the time bomb and everyone could interact with everyone else's time bomb in the map? So your friend would place one down on round one and then you can go and activate it on round 99 right before you and your team hit round 100. And then your friend gets super mad, falls out with you and never speaks to you again. So I can totally understand why Treyarch made it to just be a one time bomb per map on this map Berry. But there you go. That is what happens when multiple people use the time bomb at the exact same time in the map 
buried. And of course, that is the end of Mythbusters in Monday Season 2, Episode 63. Hope you guys have enjoyed this one. And if you have, make sure you absolutely smash that like button right now. As I said before, we are going to aim for 10,115 likes on this video to celebrate Episode 200 of Mythbusters in Mondays. And if you guys are brand new to the channel, make sure you click that subscribe button and become the latest member of the Pizza Club. But with that all said, thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next video or the next live stream. Thank you for watching, guys. And peace out.